Yeah, I used to fucking. Cr I not, did I just say 20? Yeah. No, three sets of 10. Three sets of 10? Yeah, which was like 30. It was pretty good. Yeah, that Welcome back, everybody. If you're new, I'm Cam. Welcome to the Print Life Tutorials. All right, in today's tutorial, I'm gonna do two things. One, I'm gonna show you how to make a registration mark. Uh, and then number two, I'm gonna show you how to create a template or a reusable template in Illustrator that you can paste your separations into and then that way your registration and your, your artboard is ready to go. Okay, let's do it. All right, the first thing on the agenda is to create a new artboard and then save that artboard out so that we can reuse it over and over again. Let's do that. Now, the way that I tend to size my artboards is to the size of my palettes out of my press. So we have a 16 by 20 palette, right? So we know that our maximum width on our standard palettes is gonna be 16 inches wide, but I actually take away an inch just so that we never go over. It's kind of like a, a margin, it's a safe margin. So we'll go 15 inches wide and we're gonna make our artboard 19 inches tall. So what I have done it's essentially created my palettes from my press right here on Adobe Illustrator. Once you have those done, hit create. And that's our artboard. The next thing that I've always found important is to have your rulers up. So go to the menu and select view. Come down to rulers and then you're going to do show rulers. Sometimes your system may be showing millimeters or centimeters, but you want inches to be showing here. To switch it over, right click on the ruler and you'll see you can check what unit of measure you want. And we're just going to make sure inches is checked and we're good to go. Okay, the next thing that I've always liked to do is uh, put a center line, like from just the center line. It's just showing me where the center of this artboard is. Uh, this thing is 15 inches wide, so we need seven and a half, right? So this would be 7.5. So now I just have a, a nice easy line here that's showing me the center of my artboard. I'm always going to have this here. Now let's just go ahead and save this as right now. So you can save this in a nice secure location, whether it's on your desktop or if you have a, well, we actually use, uh, we have a folder called design tools and all of our print utensils and everything are in that design tools folder. But for now, let's just save it on the desktop and we're gonna call this registration template. Okay, hit save and hit okay. Next thing that I want to do is, like I always do, is just get rid of all these swatches because we don't want them on our template. We want this to be a bare bones template without any colors. So first thing you're going to do is uh, select the white, then hold shift and select the last color, hit the trash can, and delete all the swatches. So now we have a nice blank template to start our work from. All right, we've set up the artboard the way we need it. Now it's time to get to the meat and potatoes of this tutorial, which is creating the registration marks. Now keep in mind, these marks are, you can use them on this template or you can just copy and paste them into any other artboard that you want. They're very versatile and it just saves you time by not having to make them every time you separate a new art file. Alright, let's get it. Let's create some registration marks here. Actually, we're just going to create one. You're going to go over to your toolbar and you're going to select the line tool. Once you got that line, make sure you have it set at a one point stroke. I found that this is more than enough line weight for the majority of registration marks. You can take it up to two if you want. We've just found that we like one point. And then you're going to want to make sure that the fill is deleted. You're going to have no fill and then you want to activate the stroke. Okay. Now when the stroke is activated, you're going to come over to the swatches window and you're going to select the registration fill right here. See it? It's the one that looks like a target. You've probably wondered your whole life what the hell that is. This is what it's for. I'm gonna show you right now. So make sure you fill the stroke with the registration and we're ready to draw our first line. This can be as big or as small as you want. I've always just kind of winged it. Uh, just whatever visually works right for you. So you're gonna click, drag down, and then hold shift. Shift makes it to where it's, it's like at solid angles, like a 90 or a 180 degree angle. So it just keeps it rigid. Hold shift, drag down when you have it where you want it. It should look just like that. I'm gonna grab my magnifying tool and zoom in just so we can see what we're doing. Okay, I'm gonna get my direct selection tool again. I'm gonna select this line. Now I'm gonna hit Control C 
and then I'm going to hit Control F to paste it in front. So now there's technically two lines sitting right on top of each other. Use your direct selection tool again, hover over the outside of the line here, hold shift, and then click. Now you can drag this to a zero degrees, making a plus sign. See our plus sign there? Pretty straightforward. It's still filled with our registration fill, because you can see it over here in the swatches window. It has the white highlight around it, so we know this is filled with the registration marks. Fill color thing. You get the idea. All right, now you can use a plus. You don't have to put the circle around it, but as for aesthetic reasons, I like it. I've seen people use triangles, all kinds of stuff, but we're just gonna use the traditional ellipse tool. Again, make sure that it is filled with the registration fill. And then what you're gonna do is go to the intersection, hover over it, and it'll say intersect. You're gonna click, you're gonna hold shift, and you're gonna drag, I'm sorry, you're gonna hold shift and alt and then drag out. What that does is centers it and makes it a rigid circle. It doesn't allow you to make it into like an oval. See, I'm pulling all over the different directions, but it's staying centered and it's staying as a rigid circle. Get it out where you want it, release click, and you're good to go. This is our first registration mark. All right, now, what does the registration field do? What it basically does is if you fill it with the registration swatch, it will show up on every single film. So, for instance, let's say you have a spot red, a spot blue, and a spot green on this artboard. When you go to print the films, as long as your registration layer is turned on and the registration marks are showing, print those registration marks on every film color in the exact same location. It makes it super easy to have registration marks, and more importantly, have custom registration marks as opposed to the stock ones that come like in your RIPs or in Adobe Illustrator. These are your own custom registration marks that have the line weight and the size that you like for your shop. All right, so we've made the first registration mark. So let's do a control G and group that together. And if we look over here in the layers, you'll see it is confined into a group, right? Let me zoom out just a little bit more. And the first step I'm gonna do is take this first registration mark. I'm gonna click it and I'm gonna drag it near the top of the artboard here. And I'm gonna center it right here on our center line. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to highlight it again with the selection tool. I'm gonna click it, I'm gonna hold Alt, and you'll see the double arrow pop up. All right, I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag to the right, and then if I don't hold Shift, you see how I can move it up and down, but if I hold Shift, it locks it directly in line with my center mark. And I'm gonna drag this registration mark over to the artboard edge here. Okay, and then I'm gonna release click, and we're good to go. Now I'm gonna take this one again and do the exact same thing. I'm gonna hold Alt, I'm gonna click, I'm gonna hold Shift and drag it over to the other side. And I'm actually centering the uh, vertical line up at the one inch mark on both sides of this. So technically I think these things are, I don't know, 14 inches wide from ridge mark to ridge mark, something like that. All right, so now we have three registration marks at the top of our artboard. You can do this two different ways. I like to actually group these because we always use three registration marks. So I'll select all three by dragging and then I'm gonna hold shift and drag across this thing and I'm gonna click it so that just these things are selected and then I'm gonna do control G again. And then you'll see over here in the layers that grouped all three of these into a set of registration marks. I have found personally that this is the way I like to leave it. So I like to just have one and then if I need a second set, I'll simply click it again Hold Alt, drag it down to the bottom while holding Shift. That keeps it in line. Even if I'm, you know, if I don't hold Shift, I can move it all over the place. But when I'm holding Shift, it keeps it in line, and I'll take it below my art wherever I need it. Another thing that you want to do before you before you finalize this artboard is rename this layer as Registration, uh, and you can also choose or not choose to lock it down so that you. You can unlock it when you need to manipulate them, but they kind of stay put until you need that. I never lock them down. Uh, once you've renamed a registration, hit save. So now we have our basic registration template, pretty straightforward. Now how do you utilize it? Well, let's say you have an art file here. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. Number one, you can separate it right here in this window and then copy and paste this registration mark uh, into this window over here. It's not the way that I tend to do it, Again, it's all preference. All of these steps, there's a million different ways to, to do it. 
This is the way that I found that I like to do it. So I'll select everything with the direct selection tool. I'll hit control C. Then I'll head over to my registration template. Before I paste it, I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna name that layer art. And I just make sure that that layer is selected and I'll control V and paste that artwork into that layer. Uh, now, before I do any separating, I'll make, sh make some adjustments to my artboard. Uh, we know that this is as long as our artboard goes because we can only print 19 inches tall. Uh, so we're gonna actually have to scale this image back. Uh, Adobe Illustrator has this really convenient window here where you can take, you know, it tells you how tall the artwork is. So I'm just gonna take this artwork down to 16.625. We like to keep everything at round numbers, so let's call it 16.5 inches tall. That's how, how tall this artwork's gonna be. The nice thing about doing it this way is that you have the client sign off on 16.5 inches tall. And then if they ever question it, as long as, you, as long as you've marked on your invoice 16.5, you can bust your ruler out, you can check your measurements, and as long as it's 16.5 inches wide, you did what the customer asked, and they also signed off on it. So you're saving your own ass by, by having you know, pretty round numbers that can be measured with a ruler easily. All right, so we're at 16.5 inches tall. We have it on its own layer. The registration layer is here. And then the next thing that I'll do is I'll just move these layers around and make sure that everything's as tight as possible. And then if I have to, I'll make some adjustments to my artboard. You can, you can enter in the, numer the numbers here. And then if I have to, I'll make some document adjustments to adjust the artboard here. So you go document setup here in the toolbar. You go edit artboards. And then it gives you a couple options. You can enter the number here or you can just drag and tighten things up a little bit, whichever way you want. When you're done, hit enter. I'm sorry, damn it. When you're done, just uh, hit the selection tool and click off of it and it'll take you back. So this looks pretty good. From here, you can follow the tutorial. I will put the how to separate tutorial in the description of this video. And uh, I will show you how to separate multicolor art files in Adobe Illustrator using spot colors. I think I covered everything. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is your registration template. You've saved it, you, and you've now copied and pasted it in here. And then all you'll do is to make sure you don't save over your registration template, you're going to go save as, and you just call this whatever your, your art file is. Um, heart, art, seps, and save them out. All right, so now we still have our original registration template, the blank one with no colors, and then we have this artboard ready to color separate so go ahead and click the link in the description and i'll show you how to separate this stuff in adobe illustrator coolio all right guys thanks for checking out my quick tutorial on setting up a registration mark template in adobe illustrator uh be sure to like subscribe think about all that kind of crap uh and do me a huge favor share all this stuff on your social media because that seems to be what's helping this channel grow the fastest is all of you wonderful people sharing this with all of your people cool uh take care of yourselves print family peace out yeah peace out